Achieving realistic skin tones can be one of the most frustrating and challenging aspects of painting. It can be difficult to capture the subtle nuances of color, light and shadow that make skin look alive and three-dimensional. But with the right techniques, you can achieve a lifelike and believable portrait. So in this video, I will be sharing my tried and true methods for painting realistic skin tones. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced painter, these techniques will help you achieve the realism you are looking for in your paintings. So one of the most important things is to start with a limited color palette. This may seem counterintuitive, as many people believe that the more colors they have, the more options they have to work with. However, the opposite is actually true. By starting with a limited palette, you are able to focus on the shades and hues that are most important for achieving a lifelike skin effect, rather than getting overwhelmed by a multitude of colors and creating a big muddy mess when mixing them all together. I mostly just use yellow ochre, burnt sienna and pink for all of my skin tones. This sounds like a no-brainer, but it's more important than you think. Start with clean water and a clean brush. This way you are able to ensure that the colors you mix are fresh and brilliant, rather than muddy and dull. Especially the first layers can make or break your artwork. If they are random, chaotic and muddy, it will be much harder later to ease out mistakes and create even areas of color. Therefore, when I start mixing skin tones, I begin with a natural and fresh base color that I evenly apply over the entire skin area, including face and neck. For this portrait, I used a mix of red and yellow ochre, orange and burnt sienna to create my base layer. Now, when it comes to adding in other colors to the base color, it's important to start with small amounts and gradually build up. This will allow you to control the intensity of the color and avoid oversaturation. I always start with a small amount of color and lots of water and then I add more as needed. This allows me to make adjustments and fine tune the color as I go. Watercolors especially are highly pigmented and it's easy to spoil the color you just mix with a heap of a strong pigment like burnt sienna for example. Therefore I make sure to be extra careful when I mix colors. Remember that watercolor is a transparent medium. You can use the same shade of color for multiple areas in your portrait and build up layer by layer. And in the end, it looks like you've mixed many different skin tones, whereas in reality, the color is the same, but because they are on top of each other, they create different shadings. This technique is called building up layers. And to achieve it, you first need to know where the layers in your portrait are supposed to go. I do that by mentally simplifying the planes of the face. For example, areas of shade, midtones and highlights into big simple forms, which I then fill in with paint one by one, letting each area dry before I paint the next. By the way, if you want to know the exact colors I mixed and how I achieved the layering effect in this portrait, slowed down and easy to follow, check out the extended version of this tutorial, available exclusively on my Patreon page. It includes the reference photo, material list and even a printable underdrawing. But that's not all. As a student, you will have access to over 200 painting tutorials and videos, covering everything from step-by-step -step lessons to essential techniques and materials, my art supply foundation course and my course about how to find the perfect references for your art. If you're serious about improving your painting skills and want to learn from me in an even more personal and in-depth way, then I invite you to become my student. Just follow the link in the video description and start learning today. Now, here is an example of how I analyze my reference and separate the individual parts of the face into areas of the same color value. In this portrait, the areas that I simplified in my mind are the left side of the face, which is entirely in the shades, then the lips and the shading around the right eye. Furthermore, the next areas that I simplified are all the midtones on the right side of the face. These forms often follow the natural bone structure and planes of the face and the more portraits you paint, the easier it will become for you to identify these shapes most faces have in common. So if this sounds a little bit overwhelming for you in the beginning, you don't have to worry about that because the more you practice portraits, the better you will get in identifying these shapes. Now, once I decided on the simplified areas I want to paint, I start by mixing a light tone and paint it in. Even if the shade isn't nearly dark enough in the beginning, 
by applying this light tone to the portrait, I can see if it works out or not. If it does look good, I can then go ahead and add more layers. For this portrait, I mixed the same light shade with ochre and burnt sienna that I used in my first layer and painted with that shade all the areas on the right side of the face, except for the highlights. I made sure to paint the whole area at once. I do that because this ensures that the color dries up evenly. When you use too much brush strokes or wait too long, the watercolor starts to sink into the paper and by pushing it back and forth, you create patches and blotches and it will all turn into a big mess. So try to paint these simplified shapes rather quick and at once. And remember, when you are happy with your finished simplified layer, to wait for it to dry before adding the next layer. Otherwise, the colors will become muddy and bleed into themselves. In my last course, one of the students asked me if they could follow my lesson without a hairdryer to dry each layer before we proceeded with the next. I was quite shocked, because having a dried layer to work on is absolutely necessary. There is no way to create realistic effects with watercolors without building up at least a few layers. So be patient and dry each layer before you continue. It's also important to try to add more colors to the skin than you actually see. This may seem strange, but it's actually a great way to achieve a more realistic effect. Skin always has green, blues and reds in it. And by exaggerating these colors, you are able to create a more dynamic and lifelike painting. Additionally, you are able to ensure that the painting doesn't become too monochromatic or flat. And you can do that while keeping a limited color palette. Watercolor, unlike any other medium, offers a very unique way for us artists to accomplish adding different hues to our artwork. While you apply paint to the paper, you can actually alternate it by mixing in other colors. Here, for example, I started out with an orangey ochre tone and I continued with olive green while the color was still wet. The colors will merge naturally into each other and create organic transitions without you having to worry about it. When I paint skin tones, I often alternate the hue by using a bit more ochre, pink and orange for mid-tones and olive green or fan dyke brown for shades. Skin often has green, blues and reds in it, so I try to exaggerate these colors when I see them or make them up entirely if I don't see them to create a more realistic appearance. Another important thing to keep in mind is that everyone's skin tones are different and unique and it's essential to study and observe the specific skin tones of the person you're painting. The portrait I chose for this painting has warm yellowish skin tones, so I used a lot of yellow ochre, but depending on your reference, it can be an entirely different palette you're going to use for your painting. So take time to observe and study your reference. Pay attention to the specific skin tones of the person you're painting. And remember that skin tones vary depending on the individual. Skin tones are not just one single color, but a mix of different shades and hues. And when you stay within a limited color palette of only four or five shades, it will be easier for you to mix these individual tones for your portrait. Another key aspect to achieve realistic skin tones with watercolors is using the right materials. I mentioned before how important it is to build up layers. So if you work with a paper that let you lift off the paint easily, or the watercolor paint itself can be lifted off easily, layering will become an incredibly frustrating process. And you might end up drawing over your entire portrait with color pencils to correct all the blotches and patches that emerged when the paint got lifted off. You will notice this effect when you paint a few layers. Does the underlying watercolor reactivate and mix into the color you have on your brush? If it does that, then your materials are unfortunately not up to the task. Sometimes the paper is the culprit, but sometimes it's the paint. From my experience, Japanese watercolor paint is easier to lift off. But I personally like to work with Japanese paints because they are usually higher pigmented than regular paint. Therefore, I'm a bit more careful to select the right paper for my purpose. By the way, you can find my recommendations for paper and paints in the video description. Therefore, you need to do a thorough material check first before you attempt to paint a complex subject like a portrait. For simpler subjects like urban sketching, flowers or landscapes, most materials are perfectly suited, but a realistic portrait has different requirements for the materials. 
Which brings us to the next part of my technique to paint skin tones, which is my color pencil process. In fact, when we are being perfectly strict here, this part is more drawing than painting. But the final result looks almost like a painting because I used wax and oil-based pencils that eliminate grain and achieve a convincing photorealistic effect that resembles actual paintings. Depending on what style I'm going for, I might use heavy or minimal color pencil work in my art. For this portrait, I wanted to go for a photorealistic appearance. Therefore, I needed to use heavy layers of color pencils. But in many other portraits, I only used light color pencils on areas that just needed a bit of detail or correction. The possibilities for using color pencils in your work are endless and you can follow your own taste and preferences to use them however you like them. Now, because I planned on using many layers of color pencils here, I know that I would press harder the more pigment I lay on the paper. Therefore, I needed a sturdy watercolor paper that creates minimal grain. So if you are going to paint a realistic portrait yourself, make sure your paper is up to the task for the coloring pencil process as well as the watercolor process and the characteristics like lifting off paint. Don't be afraid to use more pressure when laying color pencils on top of each other. Many of my students are afraid to raise the pressure, but you can't go wrong if you start with light pressure and raise it as you proceed with the portrait. My current favorite paper that is suitable both for watercolors and heavy use of color pencils is Claire Fontaine Hot Pressed Watercolor Paper. Due to its smooth surface, it creates minimal grain, which makes it ideal for creating detailed and realistic skin tones. I use both Luminance and Polychromos pencils to add the finishing touches to my portrait. The Luminance pencils I use for creating highlights, blending and softening edges, and Polychromos pencils for creating fine details, transitions and contours. Luminance pencils are perfect for creating vibrant and radiant hues, while Polychromos are better for creating details, sharper edges and borders. Both of these pencil types have some distinct differences in terms of their pigmentation, texture and application that you need to keep in mind when using them. The Luminance pencils by Carondage are somewhat softer and have a high level of color saturation, which is great. And I always use them for lips or eye colors because these are areas where I need vibrant colors. In addition, luminants are also super easy to blend and can be layered. When layering them, it will eliminate any color pencil grain. Suppose you used hot press watercolor paper, of course. With cold press watercolor paper, you can forget that because the surface is way too rough. Now, the luminance pencils are perfect for achieving high color coverage, but due to their softness, they create a somewhat strong grain when used as a single layer on top of a watercolor area. Therefore, I mainly use them whenever I have already added a few layers of color pencil and the luminance pencils only serve to blend all the color pencil pigments together. Now, the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils, on the other hand, are oil-based pencils that have a harder texture and are perfect for creating fine details and for making transitions between colors. These pencils have a harder texture than luminance pencils and produce therefore a finer grain. I use them mainly as the first layer when I begin to add color pencils to my watercolor paintings. The only exception is for very light shades like white or Naples yellow, where I have to use luminance pencils because the polychromos pencils don't have enough coverage and pigmentation. In fact, the light polychromos shades are entirely useless for my technique. As a general rule, I prefer to start with polychromos and then switch over to luminance with the exception for light shades. Now, mixing colors for skin tones can be tricky, but with practice, experimentation and the right techniques, you can master it. I suggest you try out my techniques and see what works best for you. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and try different combinations of colors to get all the hues of the skin tones. The more you practice, the better you will become at mixing colors and creating realistic skin tones. And tell me in the comments if you tried some of my techniques in your own portraits and if they worked for you. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and I see you in the next one. Bye bye!